Good morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to worship on this All Saints Sunday with Middle Spring Presbyterian Church. It's a joy to be uh, back here with you live and to be uh, celebrating the communion of saints in light and to be celebrating the communion of saints here in this mortal coil. We had hoped that today would be our first beginning of in-person worship, but as you hopefully have heard by now, uh, one member of our family had some significant exposure to someone who tested COVID positive shortly thereafter, and so out of an abundance of caution, the session here decided that we would postpone the beginning of our worship until next Sunday. Hopefully that will happen. We trust it will happen. Again, out of an abundance of caution, we have tried to do all the recording for this with Ingrid, keeping her uh, exposure to a minimum, so none of the singing happened with Ingrid in the room. We recorded, I recorded her, and then we used that as playback later. It's, It's a little rough, so just be gentle as you sing along with the hymns this morning. We did our best, but it's wonderful to be together today. Let's join in prayer. In life and in death, you bless us, O God. When trouble overwhelms us, you save us. When sorrow overtakes us, you comfort us. When death overcomes us, you overcome death and raise us to new life. You promise us joy everlasting and even now give us glad hope and glimpses of your realm, which is to come when Christ makes all things new for calling us your children and bestowing upon us such great love. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. The Spirit bids us worship in response to God's love. So let's join together in the call to worship. Look, a vast multitude, citizens of every nation, speakers of every tongue, standing before the throne of the Lamb. See how they dwell within God's temple in the shelter of one who wipes away their tears. We join our voices with these saints and with the choir of angels who forever sing God's praise, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Our gathering hymn this morning is From All That Dwell Below the Skies. It can be found uh, in Glory to God on 327 and in your blue hymnal, if you have it at home, 229. Let us stand in body and or spirit and sing God's
Friends, because God is holy, we who are called God's children are also deemed holy. But we must admit that our behavior, our thoughts, our words, our deeds, the meditations of our hearts are not always in keeping with God's holiness. So with confidence in the mercy of God, we confess our need of God's grace. Gracious God, you call us your own children and cover us with your love. We would seek to be merciful as you are and to show compassion as you do. But we fail to live the life to which we have been called. Where we ought to forgive, we condemn. The evil we should shun, we embrace. God, break open our hardened hearts. Grant us the grace to turn toward others with loving kindness and help us be instruments of healing and wholeness until we are raised in perfection on the last day. Amen. Sisters and brothers, hear the good news. No one who takes refuge in God will be condemned. The love of God is everlasting. God's mercy abounds forever. Those of us who have passed through these waters are new creation. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. Believe this good news and be at peace. Amen. This morning we have a lesson for uh, we have a lesson for the children with Luna that's pre-recorded. So let's go say good morning to Luna. Good morning, happy All Saints Day. You might be wondering what All Saints Day is. Luna was also wondering. She heard about All Saints Day and she wanted to show me that she was worthy of being part of the saints. That she was just an angel. So she put herself in this little getup. So we talked about what it means to be a saint, and I told her that she did not have to be an angel. It wasn't her behavior that makes her a saint. It's not how we act that makes us saints. So we're going to go ahead and take this off of her so that she doesn't get too confused. And then I'm going to read you something from a letter in the Bible. It's from 1 John chapter 3, and in this letter, we learn this. God really loves us. God calls, uh, God calls God's children saints, and we know that we are saints now. We don't know what we'll grow into or become, but we do know that saints are like Jesus. So we try to be like saints every day. So that's what the author of First John tells us about what it is to be a saint. You are a saint because God loves you. And then, because God loves you, and because you are a saint, you try to act like Jesus. That's our example. He is our example for what it is to be a perfect saint. And we'll never be perfect in this lifetime, but it's because we are grateful for God's love that we seek to act in ways that are God-like and like Jesus. So that's what makes us saints, God's love, and then our gratitude and the ways that we act in response to God's love. So just remember today, God loves you, you are a saint, and then do your best every day to act like a saint, to act like Jesus. Thanks for listening, let's pray. God, we give you thanks. We're grateful for all the ways that you love us, even when we do not deserve it, you still love us. And so let us be thankful. Let us be grateful to you for your love. And let us always remember to act like the saints that you have made us to be. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. In preparation for hearing God's word, let's pray. In your word, O oh God, show us heaven. By your spirit, show us truth through Christ, the living word in whom we see your face. Amen. 
Our lesson for All Saints Day today comes to us from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. Hear the words of John of Patmos from his vision, his revelation. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Take a moment and see if you can remember the largest crowd you've ever been in. Was it a sporting event, a concert, a theatrical production? Maybe it was some kind of demonstration or rally. I think for me it was probably a concert, a musical concert. Derek remembered a day walking through Times Square on uh, New Year's Eve day and being there at about 2 o'clock and just simply being astounded. It was actually 1999, so a day that almost a million people came to Times Square by nighttime to celebrate. So that was a huge crowd for him. Normally when people come together in a crowd like that, they have some kind of unifying purpose or cause or event that's drawing them together. And uh, if you're coming to see a, a sports team or a politician or a band, there's probably some significant commonalities between those who have gathered. Today, especially in our climate, those who gather in large crowds tend to be more alike one another than different from one another. It's not universally true, but it is probably a different kind of experience than what we hear about in John's revelation. This vision given to John is of a great multitude, like no crowd that has ever been gathered. It's uncountable. No one can count it. Those gathered in the crowd come from every nation, every tribe, every people, every language. This grand inclusive vision is God's intended end of all things. It's a hopeful vision. It's a vision which reminds us that God's redemption is always bigger than we can imagine. It's a vision of people gathered around a common purpose that is truly uniting and unifying. They have gathered to worship the one, the one who can offer salvation. It's a vision that should give us great hope. Great hope for those who have gone before us. Great hope for ourselves. Because the God of this vision is lavish with love and abundant with mercy. There is a great multitude gathered from every nation, every tribe, every people, every language. The God of this vision isn't stingy or tight or exacting with salvation, but generous.
What we might wonder did it take to get into this crowd? Who are these people who are gathered? The same question is asked and answered in part in the text. These are those who have come through the great ordeal. What that ordeal is or was is not specified. A lot of people have imagined what that ordeal might be in apocalyptic visions filled with violence and anger and retribution. But this vision points to something simpler and maybe even harder. This crowd is filled with those who have hungered, who have thirsted, who were vulnerable. They are those who mourned and those who looked for the way of the Lamb. Why else would the elder now say of the people in the crowd, they will hunger no more and thirst no more, the sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat, for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. If this language sounds familiar to you, I hope that you are recalling the Beatitudes at the beginning of Matthew. That's where we began this church year. The beginning of Matthew. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn and the meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who are merciful, and those who are peacemakers. These in the crowd are those who have also looked to Jesus to be their shepherd and guide, to show them the way to life, both here and eternally. And those gathered in this multitude of a crowd are people from every people and every language and every nation and every tribe. In that is blessing all of those different kinds of people gathered together. That is the inheritance that we are promised in Christ. As I think more about this great multitude, I realize that every single one of them wants to be there, wants to be a part of a crowd that is eternally praising God, wants to be among those described by the Beatitudes, those who were poor in spirit and meek, those who hungered and thirsted for righteousness. They want to be a part of those who sought guidance from God, who vulnerably sought to give themselves for the sake of the other. And because they come from every nation, every tribe, every people, every language, there must be a multiplicity of thoughts and voices and causes and desires and passions that they had among them. They're unified in their love for God, but they are diverse in how that love was expressed during their individual lifetimes. How different is that from how we operate now too often? Too often we have come to think that there is one right way, my way. One path to salvation sometimes even, usually through the denomination of which we're a part. One way to think about issues, my way. Only certain things worth being passionate about, those things which matter to me. And too often then we go that next step thinking that if you don't think my way or believe what I believe, then you are probably an idiot, and you might even be morally bankrupt. Even when we are open to the possibility that we have something to learn from one another, too often we're reluctant to enter into conversation. We prefer to avoid difficult subjects, maybe because we're too proud or maybe because we are too easily satisfied with the false peace that comes from not engaging one another. But I believe that the people seen in John's vision are those who have been willing to be open to and embrace the other. They are those who have understood that this world is given to us by a gracious God, and that this world is a unified whole. 
I believe that we're called to live as those who, using theologian, theologian Cindy, Cindy Bourjol's language, see the world this way, as whole, seamlessly interwoven, dynamic, coherent, radiant, precious, creative, and compassionate, and to know ourselves as belonging to and suffused in this oneness. In other words, we need each other, and we need each other's ways of being, because no one of us, no one group or tribe or people or language or nation has all the answers. So if this is our calling as Christ's disciples to be open and vulnerable as we move through this world, then the Apostle Paul tells us how to do that. In Ephesians, Paul writes to the church, I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Nowhere does Paul say that this will be easy to live this way with humility and patience. In fact, we can count on it to be difficult, especially in times of crisis, especially in those times when we are more prone to shoring up our defenses or figuring out who is on our side or making sure that we have what we need to survive. I seek to stand firm on what I believe about being open and vulnerable but it is not easy, and I never do it perfectly. But the text from Revelation shows us that kingdom in God is about coming together with people who are unlike us, and the kingdom of God is about the reconciliation of us with God and us with one another. I suspect that even, I suspect that in the coming days and weeks and months and maybe even years, we'll have plenty of opportunity to demonstrate humility and patience and to seek reconciliation. I hope that each of us will cast a ballot on Tuesday, but no matter who wins this election, county, state, and federal government, healing will not happen in this country overnight. So after the election, we will have continued choices to make. To whom or to what will we bear witness? Will we choose to bear witness to the God who embraces this vast multitude of saints by being people who do not allow for the vilification of those with whom we disagree, even our enemies? Will we be people who bear witness to the God who seeks reconciliation through Jesus Christ by being people who are willing to risk difficult conversations to find common ground? Or will we bear witness to self-glorification by continuing to live in ways that prioritize me and my rights and my beliefs? Even as we look forward with great hope to the next life and to joining the saints who live eternally in light. We have an opportunity every day here to live as saints. We do so in part by having a broader vision of what makes us complete and whole beings before God, one another, every nation, every people, every language, every tribe, living together, praising God, with every thought, every word, every deed. May it be so for each of us. Amen. Let us join together in confessing our faith using the, the Apostles' Creed, the creed that we have used for centuries, for millennia, to say who we are as a people. We pray together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please stand in body and or spirit to sing For All the Saints, verses 1 and 2. It can be found in Glory to God 326 or the Blue Hymnal 526. As we continue our liturgy to remember the saints in our lives and the saints of this church, please join in the announcement of comfort and hope. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. God comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their their sorrows sorrows with the consolation consolation we ourselves have received from God. God. When we were baptized into Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. At this time, we call the names of members and friends of Middle Spring Presbyterian Church who have died since our last All Saints celebration, joining the saints who live eternally with God. Robert Edgar Bard Sr., Bob, born on October 16, 1932, joined Middle Spring Presbyterian Church on March 4, 2003, died on November 18, 2019. Harold Dana Perk Isle, born on April 26, 1947. Perk was a friend to us here at Middle Spring, regularly in worship. 
died on April 2nd, 2020. Gerald Jerry Arthur Gross, born on August 30, 1946, joined Middle Spring Presbyterian on March 29, 1961, ordained as a ruling elder on January 9, 1972, ordained as a deacon on January 4, 2015, died on July 24, 2020. Linda May Stolte, born on June 4, 1949, joined Middle Spring Presbyterian on May 11, 2014, ordained as a deacon on January 3, 2016, died on August 27, 2020. Mary Elizabeth Mellinger, born on January 6, 1936, joined Middle Spring Presbyterian on November 19, 1961, died on September 11, 2020. Thelma Cover Brenneyes, born on May 26, 1929, joined Middle Spring Presbyterian on October 11, 1992, was ordained as a deacon on January 10, 1999, died on October 15, 2020. Holy God, for all of these who have been a part of the life of Middle Spring Presbyterian Church, a part of our common life, we give you thanks. Continue to comfort those who mourn the loss of loved ones, especially these who were dear to all of us. We thank you for all in them that was good and kind and faithful and for the love that you kindled in them of your dear name. In Christ we pray. Amen. At this time, I encourage you to light your own candle at home, to take some time in prayers of gratitude for the saints in your life who've taught you about love and life and faith, to take some time in quiet reflection during our music.
Let us join together in the responsive prayer for the saints. God, we remember those saints who have gone before us. We lament their passing and honor their legacy. We give thanks for all who we have learned from them. Those who followed the way of Christ faithfully, we follow their example. Those who made mistakes along the way, we learn from their experience. Those who made progress for peace, we continue their work. Those who lived simply and quietly, we are enlightened by them. Those who gained honor and distinction without pride, we are humbled by them. Those who were martyred for their faith, we commend them to your care. They have finished their work on earth, and it lives on, rippling into our lives now as the work of Christ lives on. May the peace of Christ continue to inspire us to good works, humility, simplicity, and peacemaking, as those foremothers and forefathers were inspired by him to live in grace and love. Amen. We close our liturgy for the saints by singing verses 3 and 5 of all the saints. Please stand in body and or spirit. Friends, at this time of the offering, I give you thanks for all the ways that you have offered your financial gifts and your gifts to Middle Spring. You know by now how to get your offering to us. Thank you for the extra trouble that you have gone to to do so. As an offering of your life this week, consider taking some time to write a note to any of the saints that you remembered today who are still living. Let them know how much you appreciate what they have taught you and who they are in the world. In response to God's goodness, we say together, Thank you, O God, for the gifts you give. This morning, as we enter into our prayers of the people, I ask you to uh, take a moment to lift any joys or concerns that you would like to share with everyone this morning into uh, our comments. If you're watching this, uh, if you're worshiping with us later in the day, please feel free to email me or the church office if you have joys or concerns you would like lifted up during our time of uh, live worship. This morning, our church flowers were given by Warren and Kyla Jones in honor of their children. And there's a yellow rosebud on our chancel as well. This was given, and Kyla and Warren give it every year, in honor of their daughter, Elizabeth H. Jones, who was born stillborn. So we give thanks for Warren and Kyla's continued uh, witness to the difficulty that they went through and their willingness to share others, share life with others who have gone through that same difficulty. This morning we lift up in prayer Wells Valley Presbyterian and South Mountain Chapel Brethren Church. 
and also Camino de Fe, the Walk of Faith Presbyterian in Comayagua, Honduras. For all of these churches and their ministries, please pray this week. Last other joys, uh, Derek and I had a wonderful time away to celebrate our 25th anniversary, so thank you for that time, and thank you to all of you for your prayer and your well wishes and the cards that you sent. We very much appreciated being remembered and celebrated for this special occasion in our lives. Uh, and uh, another joy is that uh, though Derek had some significant exposure to someone who was COVID positive, so far, we're all doing great, so we pray that that will continue. We can all smell the coffee every morning. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Gus, are there any other joys to share in the comments? Concerns, then, to share with you. Please continue in prayer for Dick and Shirley Weller. Dick is doing remarkably well. He uh, is, again, has been being treated again for the leukemia for about a week now, and doctors felt that he was strong enough that they could actually add a second drug to uh, be a part of his healing, so we give thanks for that. Shirley and he are hoping that Dick will be released again to a rehab center, Encompass Rehab, hopefully on Monday. We will keep you updated as we get news. But Dick and Shirley, we are continuing to pray for you and so grateful for the healing that Dick has received. Please be in prayer for Kathy Bierbauer. A week or two ago, I lifted up that her aunt Mirmi was declining, and Kathy's aunt died this past Tuesday. She was still present to family and friends uh, mentally and was enjoying their company even as she was one foot here and, and one foot with God, and now she lives eternally with God in that communion of saints. But do be in prayer for Kathy and for all those who mourn Mirmi's death. Please be in prayer for those who uh, live and work on the Wilson College campus and uh, for their health and safety. And then please, I know you are in prayer, continue prayer for our coming election on Tuesday for uh, civility in our country. Those are all the concerns that I have. Gus, are there any other concerns in the comments? No concerns this morning that you have lifted up, but if you have any you would like to share with us, please feel free to do so. Let's turn to God in prayer. Eternal God, author of our past and promise of our future, we lay before you our private fears, our concerns for the world and for one another, knowing that you hear our cries. Especially today, we pray for those whom Jesus called blessed, for the poor in spirit, for those who mourn, for the humble and meek, for those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for the pure in heart, for those who show mercy and those who make peace, for those who are persecuted because of Christ. We lift all of these to you. Pour out your blessing upon them and us that we may be strengthened in every hardship and joyful at the recognition of every blessing. God, we pray for the church. Empower the church throughout the world in its life and witness. Break down any barriers that divide so that united in your truth and love, the church may confess your name, share one baptism, sit together at one table, and serve you in one common ministry. God, we pray for the earth. Restore among us a love of the earth that you created for our home. Help us put an end to ravishing its land, air, and waters, and give us respect for all your creatures that living in harmony with everything you have made, your whole creation may resound in an anthem of praise to your glorious name. God, we pray for our nation. Renew our nation in the ways of justice and peace. End division by enabling us to listen and care for one another more fully. Prosper the hands of those who work for peace. Guide those who make and administer our laws to build a society based on trust and respect. Erase prejudices that oppress. Free us from crime and violence. Guard our youth from the perils of drugs and materialism. Give all citizens a new vision of a life of harmony. 
As we come together this week in national and local elections, may the outcome of those elections be swift but just, and may each citizen seek to be a part of building up our nation as results unfold. God, we pray for all of those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, those who are facing surgery or recovering from surgery, and those who are dear to us who are in need of your healing grace. We lift them to you now, naming them either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. O God, for these and for those known only to you, we entrust them to you into your loving and healing care. Enable us to be also a part of their healing by extending our hands in acts of compassion. Covenanting God in baptism, you claim us and show us how to live. Keep us in your care until that day when all creation sings your praise and you lead all your children to the springs of the water of life in a great multitude. We pray all this through Jesus Christ, our brother, redeemer, and Lord, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A few words for the week to send you out with. Uh, just the typical reminders about Advent devotional and Advent wreaths. I, I really would like all of you to participate in the Advent devotional that we are seeking to put together. You each have something to proclaim about what it is that gives you joy or hope or enables you to live in love or peace. And so please consider doing that soon because we need to put it together soon. Uh, you may still make a reservation for next Sunday's worship. We hope that next Sunday's worship will be the beginning of in-person worship. You will receive an email today if you have not already. And there is now a reservation button on our website. I think you can use it today, but you might have to wait till tomorrow. We're still trying to work it out fully, but it will be there. Lastly, our YF are holding their chicken barbecue. They will be doing so next Saturday. It is only the chicken barbecue from 4 to 7, curbside pickup, we are no longer selling tickets. This is only for people who purchased tickets back in March when we began it. So please know that if you do not have tickets, I'm sorry, we'll get you next March, which isn't all that far away, we hope. So please be in prayer for our youth and adults as we do that in as safe a manner as possible. We will be limiting the number of people who are involved in the serving of it just to continue to be safe. Those are all the announcements that I have for you this week. Our sending hymn is again, In the Lord I'll Be Ever Thankful. It's in Glory to God 654. We'll sing that one through twice. This is something we recorded two weeks ago. Friends, you are God's friends, you are God's called and sent people. 
as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, meekness, humility, and patience. Bear with one another. As God has forgiven you through Jesus Christ, so you also must forgive one another. Above all, clothe all these things with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And now the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be yours this day and evermore. Amen.